Hey, it's, um, it's Lawrence Fishburne for History at Home. Well, uh, a few blocks from home here in New York City on a gorgeous day. Got my mask and my gloves, keeping my distance. Um, just going to take this off for a second. I'm really, really excited to uh, take about five minutes of your time to tell you about a historical figure whose work has inspired many Americans, as well as people all across the world. He was um, one of the most famous men in the 19th century. He used the power of his words to become a champion for liberty and equality. And his words also inspired the civil rights movement. Now, in the 1960s, when I was growing up here in New York City as a boy, I would hear these words very often. I would hear these words, without struggle, there is no progress. Now, have you heard those words before? If you have, then you know that the subject of today's History at Home lesson is on Frederick Douglass. Let me tell you a little bit about his remarkable story. He was born Frederick Bailey sometime around 1818, before the abolishment of slavery. He was the son of an enslaved black woman and a white father whom he never knew. Shortly after his birth, Frederick was separated from his mother. He would be raised by his grandparents on a plantation along the eastern shore of Maryland. His mom died when he was about six years old, and he was sent to work in Baltimore in the household of one of his owner's relatives. And this is where he first learned to read. He was taught in secret by his master's wife. Her name was Sophia Ald. I know this is probably hard to imagine, but at the time, it was illegal for Frederick or any enslaved person to learn how to read, but that didn't stop him. Frederick Douglass began a lifelong fascination with words and education. And when Sophia's husband ordered her to stop teaching him to read, Frederick continued on his own. He would read newspapers, he would read anything he could get his hands on. He would watch and study the white children while they studied their lessons. And later in Baltimore, he was also first introduced to the abolitionist movement. The abolitionists were a group of reformers who were fighting to end slavery. And when he was a teenager, Frederick was sent to work in the fields of Maryland. Despite the terrible conditions on that plantation, he continued to resist, reading in secret and teaching many of the other enslaved people on the plantation how to read. Then in September of 1838, he finally made his escape. He fled in secret from Baltimore and made the very dangerous journey north, coming first here to New York City. And then he settled in New Bedford, Massachusetts. It was there that he married a woman named Anna Murray, a black woman who had been born free and who had helped him to plan his escape. He and Anna took the last name Douglas and got rid of Frederick's slave name, Bailey. It was then that Douglas started to attend and to speak at abolitionist meetings. His powerful words and depictions of the lives of the enslaved moved his audiences deeply. He then launched his own abolitionist newspaper and called it the North Star. And then in 1845, he wrote the first of three autobiographies called The Narrative of the Life of Frederick Douglass. It was a bestseller and it shed light on what enslaved people went through and inspired others to join the fight to end slavery. But he was in constant danger of being caught by his former masters. So he frequently traveled abroad to avoid being captured. Eventually, a group of abolitionist supporters raised the funds to buy his freedom. This allowed Douglas to continue to speak out against the evils of slavery. You might not be surprised at this, but Douglas was also a fierce supporter of women's rights. In 1848, he attended the famous Seneca Falls Convention in New York State. He worked with leaders like Elizabeth Cady Stanton and Susan B. Anthony to help gain rights for women. And in 1861, after decades of rising tension over the issue of slavery, the American Civil War began. Douglas lobbied the new president, Abraham Lincoln, to free nearly four million enslaved people and to allow African-American soldiers to join the U.S. Army to help fight for the freedom of all African-Americans. And by the end of the war, Douglas was a celebrity. He spent the remaining years of his life working for the federal government while continuing to write and deliver powerful speeches 
on the lives of black Americans up until his death in 1895. So that's just a little bit about Frederick Douglass. We owe a great deal to him and others like him who struggled to make progress for us all. Let's never forget the importance of Frederick Douglass's legacy and his incredible story. <laughs>